mission to go to the moon. <laughs> What's up, motherfuckers? <laughs> How's it going? Checking in. This is the this is the mix play podcast. We're back, and uh, today we have a very, 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 very special guest. My homie, my friend Rob Cornell. Too kind, too kind, Nelly. It's good to be back, dude. It's been uh, it's been actually like quite some time since the last time uh, we I saw you. I think the last time wasn't it like you were you were getting out of a party. I was getting out of it. We like met back here. At like six yeah, man, in the we, morning we crashed like back that. at your place. I think um, you know, incognito guys here in LA were incognito. doing a big. Uh, That's what it was. A big um, dark, you know, industrial type techno show. Which, anytime that happens in LA, you know, you can count me in. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. You've you've uh, you you've always really just been into like the real darker side of dance music, like yeah. that really industrial techno shit. Yeah, I don't know what it. Maybe it's the Detroiter in me that might have like. Uh, caught the bug but you know i didn't actually get deep into the culture until i think i was in chicago you know and okay. i met some guys uh, and and in the club scene there and like guys like uh, jeff derringer who is you know putting out just like incredible stuff totally. at the time and and still is and so i think those guys really influenced me um when i was getting into electronic you know totally uh, like like many going through different phases finding all getting excited by Skrillex shows when you're in college and then evolving from there. And I think, you know, I love to dance, but I think like just the vibe of like some dark industrial feeling is, is what I chase after going to these events. Yeah, like le- less less dancey, more just like heavy. Uh, one, one fist yeah. in the air. Just <laughs> doof, 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 yeah, that type of I shit. I mean, I, yeah, I get excited. You get in there and there's like some massive function one set up. It's oh, like yeah. a big open hall and just the reverb is, is insane. And, you know, like it's funny because I'll talk to my friends. They'll be like, man, I, I can't listen to this outside of this, uh, the the space, beca- you know, in my car or going totally. to work in the morning. I'm like, totally. I get it because, you know, a lot of this is like just um, the feeling that you get from those frequencies from the, s- the speakers. I think that's a really crucial p- part of it all. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's 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 your your you, you hit it on the nail with that. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, because like even like like. I can listen to house, mm-hmm. like driving around and shit like that. But yeah, techno is, is just like, oh, you, oh, all I was going to say was um, Psytrance. Yeah. Psytrance. I cannot listen to that <laughs> shit anywhere outside of like a festival. And even yeah. then, like I, I can do it in little small yeah. bits, like five, ten minutes maybe. Yeah. And then just like, OK, this is like confusing me. My brain is just like being scrambled by just yep. <laughs> it's madness. I mean, it's great that there's um, there's so many sub sub genres within the overarching electronic world so like even if you're getting a little bit tired of s- or sick of one part of the culture you can kind of dig deeper you know and find something else that you're you're currently on so i think totally. it, it's just this evolution but um yeah what was your what was your first like the f- if you can remember like what was the first dance s- music song that you can remember that i was like gravitated just, towards you're yeah. like oh this is cool like oh man that's that's tough it must have been in Chicago. Okay. Um, growing up, I was kind of into like alternative rock and and stuff like that. So totally. I think really seeing acts come through Chicago, maybe <coughs> Pitchfork scene. Uh, but you know they they're kind of alternative too. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's hard to put my finger on. I think um, there was this guy in Minnesota. I don't know if you're like Minnesota bass. No. Real kind of like Wookie. Uh, Bassy, Oops. yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> and just very melty soundscapes, and uh, he was kind of esoteric at the time, but yeah, and and then to to counter that, you've got like Girl Talk, who's playing yeah. <laughs> like top twenty jams totally. back to back, sampling like fifteen seconds out of a clip, and at that point, I realized like, no, nah, that's not for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you, um, cause like when I think about the first. A, a electronic dance music song that I heard, it was uh, like the early days of Napster. Yeah. Oh. And I remember like d- down. Yeah. Like okay. da- I remember like downloading. Um. Uh. It was like video game remixes. Mm-hmm. It was like I mean obviously like the Mortal Kombat was like that was like a techno kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, like I remember like uh Ocarina of Time or like Zelda the Zelda remixes Tetris remixes. Okay. And all that kind of shit, and it's so weird because like I, I I think about when I was that little, and like the kids that I was going to school with didn't know what dance music was, but do you remember photon lights? I 
I think vaguely, yeah. They were just single push LED lights. Oh, and you okay. could get them in different colors, but they were expensive. They were like <laughs> $35 for one light. Yeah. And so I remember like all the kids at school had them. But we weren't, oh, yeah, go ahead if you want. Yeah, pour, pour yourself some wine. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Um, Sober October, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> like a good man. <laughs> ain't not. Good man to follow. <laughs> Sidetracking real quick. Uh, the Sober October thing has been pretty, pretty uh, eye-opening. Yep. I've never, I've never consciously went sober ever since I started partying. Oh, wow. Like, there, I, I'm sure there's been, you know, weeks that, like, I, I didn't drink or do anything like that, but... I never consciously made an effort, and so this time it was just like, okay, <laughs> I'm 31 now, so I'm like, okay, I gotta like, I gotta, I gotta. Do it's this. beating up on you a little bit more. I think time and time after every night, you know, you're kind of like, okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm not, I will be back for a while. <laughs> yeah, it's kinda, yeah, and it's, 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 I mean, like, it's, especially being involved with dance music, it's always a party. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's True. always, it's always surrounded by a party. I mean, obviously we love music, but. The music is being played at a party, yeah. so it's like there's always drinking and drugs involved, and so this has been a nice break. I've been uh, I've been drinking this is called Celsius. Nice. This yeah, is a what like sparkling seltzer water. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's actually it's 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 flavored and it's um all like uh the yoga yoga people drink this kind of shit. Okay. It's like uh it's no sugar. There's no like so blah blah blah. It's chakra aligned. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, top absolutely. To bottom. Yeah. <laughs> this this drink does downward dog every fucking morning, dude. So, um, so you're telling me about photons? These little like oh, expensive yeah, yeah. LED lights. These, so the, yeah, it was just it was just single two LED lights, and it was like it was it was before like light gloves, obviously, and it was yeah. just like two like like glow sticks. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I remember buying photon lights. I saved up my money for like a while to buy these photon lights, and then I bought one of those little like rotating like colored disco ball looking kind of things, gotcha. and I would listen to like these Tetris remixes like in my room, <laughs> and like I didn't really think about that until I started getting the dance music again. I was yeah. like, whoa, I was like doing this shit when I was a little kid. Yeah, and so it's just weird like how like the um, I don't know what the fuck we're talking about. Oh, we're talking about like, the first, the first, the first, the first time you heard dance music. Sure. Um, yeah, that's weird shit. Yeah, it's it's hard for me to pinpoint exactly what tracks got me into it yeah i think going into more and more live events and seeing different artists play from different genres and then just like being blown away just standing there and being totally absorbed in the music and and then letting letting that lead me into a genre you know Mm. like just going with what i really like rather than like your friends tell you oh go listen to daft punk go listen to um justice or whatever it's kind of like just walk up to a stage if it sounds good to you stick around learn the artists and and then kind of dig th- throughout what they're doing you know so i mean that's like the that's the most the most natural way of finding music mm-hmm. is letting the music find you really it's yeah. like you just kind of wandering around and then it finds you so yeah exactly. yeah that's a that's like a that's a real good way to look about it mm-hmm. look at it um with the with the whole mixed plate thing that's that's like one thing that we're we're definitely trying to like push is like and like I, I know you love techno, mm-hmm. but I'm sure you hate the techno snob people. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, like that part weird of, little culture kind of thing. Part of me can see like where they're coming from. Um, not not to give them a, an excuse or anything, but I think essentially you're trying to hold on to the culture. Totally. And of course, culture changes. So these guys are yep. are really trying to keep what was authentic and raw about um, underground music and and techno and house alive. And a lot of that was like. It wasn't about getting followers. It wasn't about like having getting signed to a label. It was kind of like about like pressing your own records and just getting it out there and having people play it in in the scene. Yep. And so I think you know like when I look at a lot of these artists that are amazing coming out of like Berlin, Detroit, Chicago, they 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 don't have like a hundred hundred thousand followers even you know, but they're putting out incredible content and it and. Maybe it's just a niche market, you know, like it's only for a certain group of people. Um, but I think the snobbery comes from not necessarily caring for like this big production level. It's more about just the feeling of, of getting together and underground. Totally. Yeah. And so with that being said, I can appreciate that. Mm-hmm. That part of it, I can totally appreciate because yeah. that makes complete sense. Like we saw it happen to um, dubstep. Mm-hmm. house became future house yep. you know what i mean like mm-hmm. it just and, i mean like that the whole like edm thing just infiltrated into it you yeah. know into each subgenre. so i can totally understand that i would also say like dance culture suffers a little bit from um people taking advantage of the situation if you're at mm-hmm. like an edc type event um 
you know you're having a great time but you don't realize that there's like predators amongst the crowd and Mm. and that's the dark part of it all but i think hopefully techno and houses facilitates more of a safe space for people to come in and be themselves and not worry like it's odd you will go into detroit and it seems like a really sketchy place we're going to like i'm um, talking about detroit movement when mm-hmm. that weekend fires off and you you go to these uh dilapidated buildings and there's like just awesome uh underground events happening everywhere but it it all feels in its core like a safe space because you know who you're surrounded by a bunch of like-minded people in, in the genre so I think that's important too and I think that's where the snobbery comes from as well they want to try to keep it safe for everybody and like maybe push a certain type of person out of Got of it. the circles or I don't know it, but it's you know you're getting exclusive at some point and you're getting kind of snobby at some point right for sure so. for sure but yeah but I mean like I think snobbery just for snobbery's sake is stupid oh, but snobbery for true. yeah keeping you know, because anyone could come in and be like, oh, dude, you're just hitting like a four count beat. Like, oh, I've heard that click track before, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, and I'll even make fun of that, too. But, you know, it's just part of that minimalism, I, I, I suppose. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah, that's 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 so interesting. I, I, I never really thought about thought about it like that mm-hmm. as like preserving a culture, because, I mean, if we're going to talk about like the culture, it started as. It started as a safe haven for gay and trans yeah. people to like be themselves, which is like kind of like what the ethos of like dance music still is. True. But there, there is those like really, really like the the dark shit that kind of is is coming in rape, rape culture and all that crazy shit, and all yeah. like roofing people and shit like that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that makes it. Um, that being said, did you watch a documentary about Union nightclub? No, like the Union in Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I haven't seen it. I ha- yeah, I, ha- I haven't seen it yet either. I heard it on. I saw uh, it was an article or something on Mixmag, but there's a documentary about about Union, and I guess mm-hmm. that used to be similar to like the like um, I forget like I guess in Chicago it was like underneath the bridges and shit like that. Okay. Or Detroit or similar to, like so basically Union was like one of these places in the early 90s that was like safe haven for gays for gay and, and trans, trans and all that kind of and, and dance music which i had yeah. no idea i just yeah. thought union was just you know what i mean it's like oh, they have shows i mean I, I i just never thought it was like of cultural importance yeah which was like whoa like i, I played there yeah. <laughs> like holy shit i had no idea this whole history of it yeah i mean um, my girlfriend caroline and i we were just talking about kind of something similar too like uh, this house music was was definitely like underground safe haven f- during a time where it wasn't, you know, popular to be gay, and and they needed a space to go and and have fun and let loose, and and everybody came together. It yeah. didn't matter who you were. Yeah. So, yeah, those roots. And and she was debating me recently, which is a fair point. Is like we look at these big ADE festivals and the top top charted people, like still a lot of like white men, and and you're kind of like, man, that culture really got ripped out. I think, you know, wh- where's the representation? Where's the diverse bookings? And I don't know. It's it's very debatable because it's like people go to see who they like. Yeah. They go to s- the promoters have to book the right people to get people to come. Yeah, they they have a lot of money on the line, I'm sure. But where is the representation from? You know, early '80s, '90s, and and people that are doing it in a diverse scene. So yeah, it just uh yeah it's, yeah. Speaking of ADE, we have uh, two of our mixed plate uh, members there, mm-hmm. um, Baseman and Young Jedi. Nice. And it's uh it's Baseman's second time there but it's young jedi's first time and yeah. i was like dude you are you're gonna be blown the fuck away have, yeah. you, have you been yet i have not no oh. but just you know again like i said the the lineups got me interested you know like uh i think their bookings tend to be stuff that i like to listen to but drum code yeah <laughs> just you know diverse um yeah but uh yeah it's you know it, it was interesting i think caroline had sent me uh a recent documentary that um i think it was ra put out and it was about drexia have, have you heard of them before i've heard i've heard the name yeah so drexia came out of detroit in like uh i believe it was like early 80s into the 90s and it's based on and this is kind of dark and sad but it's the the name is based on this like um this myth or this lore that uh during the slave trading days they would like throw uh pregnant women off of the boats that were causing like a ruckus and just into the ocean on their route if they were getting too out of line or whatnot and so but the the mythology comes from um these women went overboard and their their offspring their their children uh were able to survive in the ocean climate (sighs) and adapt 
and become these like future afro future amazing like sea creatures so drexia the artist kind of went with this mythology and created this like underwater sound and in in the in the electro so it was very much like probably reverb heavy they use vocoders to transform their voices low and passing stuff to yeah. make it like sound like it's muted yeah underwater. total underwater and it, yeah so and you know i had no clue That's and, rad. and it's awesome that they put out this documentary about it digging into the details kind of pulling up the history of where this like electro sound came from and of course it influenced a lot of stuff uh, after it so. yeah 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 oh so 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 drexia is is like electro like electro house yeah so it's under the genre i suppose electro okay um early electro er, before, early electro before, before it became edm yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Okay. you know like a lot of 808 drum machines like 909 sounds uh like just a lot of machine sounds coming out of detroit hmm. these guys trying to just create this afro future movement because they didn't really have anything else uh, the 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 city was kind of against them and they just they wanted to create this their own story their own narrative and i think that's pretty cool you know like to, to really pull cool. from mythology like that and yeah take something that was kind of dark and make it their own this is this is what we're all about so totally kind of reminds me of um like black panther like when you saw that like afro future movement and they're yeah, like isolated and Wakanda. have all this technology this it's yeah. awesome so Fuck yeah, dude. That's crazy. Yeah. I had no, you know, of course you dig deep and, and you're going to find all this uh, history yeah. you know, within the scenes. So. Yeah, yeah. Which is, yeah. Um, hopefully, that's what, like, that's what, like, this podcast a little bit we were, like, hoping to to do a little bit is because, like, um, there's, like, no, there's, like, there's no, like, hi history or log of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because we're in such a technological technological age where just, like, information gone information sure. gone you're constantly like just dumping your 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 memory bank in your brain and so if we if we can do something like this or like you know what i mean do something where we can kind of catalog these things that happen even we're, we're not shit you know what i mean we're mm -hmm. nothing but even in our little scope yeah you know what I mean? if we can kind of document things that happen like um then i think it's good for the culture you mm -hmm. know what i mean it's like it's it's the reason why we had like that documentary on netflix about union you know because yeah. there's somebody out there who like had all these memories and you know what i mean who, who who knows where this where this is gonna go sure so it's like uh yeah it's crazy man um i'm gonna like spin back this whole conversation because we jumped right into yeah, it Yeah, getting getting in hot yeah we like went straight into the music and shooting do no introductions <laughs> or none of that shit um <laughs> we actually met working at revolt yeah which is so i you sat you sat like in the cubicle right next to me yeah and i think the first thing i said to you was like i think i was like doing my time sheet i was mm -hmm. like hey what's up bro like do you know how to do this shit? You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, let me show you. Let me help you out. I got you. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's yeah. a very symbiotic relationship between the two of us yeah. always. And it's always been. Yeah. Always so, been really man, chill. when was that? I was trying to remember. That's like uh, 2011 or 12 or so, would you say? that Because yeah. I remember I was I was uh, fresh out of Chicago. I, I was just like on a whim um, coming to L.A. I, I was sick of some of the stuff that the, the work I was doing in mm. Chicago. And I, I wanted to get into more entertainment. So I kind of like jump started out here, and I think that was like around 2012. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. What is it, it's 2018 right now? Mm -hmm. I've been there for five years. Yeah, around there. Uh, so, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah <laughs> which is yeah, yeah, crazy shit, dude. <laughs> yeah, and I I remember always looking over the shit, be like looking at your computer, be like, what the fuck are you making, yeah. dude? <laughs> like yeah. crazy After Effects shit. Yeah, it was really like um, at that time coming into LA, I was like, I'm gonna do projection mapping. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. keep animating and I'm gonna keep um, putting this stuff out. And then when I met, um, I you know it was like Ivan Dadinsky at Revolt. He was like their creative director, and he was just a, a awesome, fresh mind, knew about design, and like he took a chance on me. I, I you know pitched him on all this stuff I had been doing for music and mm -hmm. bringing audio to a visual space. And um, it was awesome to have that opportunity to come in and and work with with the people at Revolt and. We, we had a lot of, like, it was like a toy studio in, in my mind. It, coming in, I remember that we had the, you know, deep in Hollywood, Highland offices, and then across the street is the, the live studio, TV yep. studio. And, uh, you know, I came, uh, I studied at Columbia College, and I studied a lot of television broadcasting, so I was familiar with, like, a lot okay, of the, 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 the television space. Yeah. yeah. Did a lot of work, like, um, as a technical director in school and studied that whole space. It's kind of, like, evolving now, of course, but... 
it was cool to have the that kind of duality, the studio space, and then our offices where we could go and kind of like create this network. You know, that, that y- became revolt. Yeah, because that's what, that's kind of what you were doing. We were like, mm-hmm. we were like, uh, we were across the street from the TV studio, and you would like conceptualize like, okay, this is the project we're gonna, and we have like three three LED walls. Okay, this is gonna be this is gonna be that. Yeah, create in your system, and then like go go across the street, and then boom, and then see it up, and yeah. then they start rolling the show. It was just like, what uh. Talk me through a little bit of like your process, I guess. Okay, so let's let's just take something like um, the one we did out in Coachella. Yeah. The the, the remember that you like you, you it was like a mansion out yeah. in Palm Springs or some shit, and you like you you had I think it's what four projectors. Yeah. So yeah, we were doing yeah four projectors out and then a preview monitor. Yeah. So yeah, that was that was fun. So Diddy, it was right around Coachella, the Coachella weekend, right? Yep. And Diddy wanted to do this big revolt takeover. I think they, you know, that's a big thing to do during Coachella weekend is have your brand take over, do the after parties. Yep. And I think it was like Adrian uh, Vargucci. Yep. He was like, uh, yo, Rob, Rob's over here. He knows how to projection map. Like, we need to get him in on this party plan. He pitched the idea. Yeah, so, huh, I so, remember that. So, dude, you know, shout out to Vargucci, man, because like. Yeah he made it happen i because i was sitting over in my cubicle you saw me just tinkering away making graphics yeah. like with this potential to go and, and do a fun projection map and adrian saw that and put me on to the the bosses the higher ups and we kind of formulated this plan and we did you know it was so so back to the process we we always start with like a location scout you know and and we got to see what this place looked like it's this place called la quinta it was like la quinta Inn or something it's this big mansion for parties and it was huge it yeah. was like it was like a 14 15 bedroom some shit like oh, yeah. that right it's, huge, it's like stories. it's like, like how do you even call it a house it's like an estate or yeah. something yeah yeah <laughs> and like i remember like the, the backyard there was like a lake and shit yeah. <laughs> it was like some crazy yeah it was shit. awesome like uh, palm springs vibes you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so we kind of you know location scouted and then like the, i think the crew like the the management and stuff they didn't really know like what was going to come out of this they were trying to like decorate it with lights and stuff and so I, co- I go back with all my reference photos and I start mocking up like where in the space we could project onto the walls and, mm-hmm. and really turn it into something special and pitch that. They loved it. I think they were still confused, like what exactly is going to be happening? People that aren't so familiar with projection mapping and then, um, you know, put together the budget and it was awesome. I pitched them on a budget for like three badass projectors, like Sony projectors and they went with it like they 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 knew it was an investment and so we got to have like buy out the gear rather than renting it so we had all this stuff to tinker with yeah you can like i said like shit. that's why i'm like this is like a, a toy store to me you know yeah. like they they pulled through on the budgets and and we went with it so the next phase was kind of back at revolt planning this thing out trying to see like what kind of graphics and it was like a sponsored party so we had to work in the sponsor and all that kind of corporate stuff but they i think they allowed me to have like a lot of fun with it do stuff similar to what i was doing on the network you know it's kind of like mtv they just want something fresh and fun totally and cool. totally 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 so you know we're i'm i'm building all these templates that will then drive the the projectors that are going to go up onto the wall so we're the biggest I, I the part i love the most is we had this big front entry it was like an a frame roof and then it was like just a box boxy design and I had like one pr- big projector just hitting that whole entryway, and then you would walk in the door that was being projected onto. That was like people's first um, entry into the party. So mm-hmm. I, I was like, "This is going to be the the wow moment." And we just did, you know, I was doing like a lot of f- fun animations based around the door and the like accents of the building and you know all your typical stuff. So. And and I, if, if 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 I can remember correctly, it was kind of like within the Revolt brand too, because it yeah. was like kind of like a glitchy like. <laughs> Yeah, kind Revolt. Of thing, like Revolt took on like a, a digital aesthetic, you know. It's yeah, very popularized now of mm-hmm. like just mess things up, you know. Like it doesn't have to be perfect; it can be glitchy and raw and yeah. um, and torn. And so we we got to have a lot of fun just playing with glitch. And like, and who doesn't want to do that for their full time graphics job? They're, like your boss comes, to you, hey, hey, we need something glitchy. <sighs> like, yeah, just give me the trippiest, glitchiest <laughs> stuff you can do. And I'm like, all right, buddy, I'm in. You know, say no more. <laughs> Say no more. No, yeah, like that's always, and I think for a while, whenever I did, like when when I, when I first started learning After Effects, mm-hmm. I um Andrew Kramer from Video Copilot came up with that plugin Twitch. Yeah, and it was like, oh shit! I was literally putting Twitch on 
everything. <laughs> like every music video I did, every, whatever, I figured out a way to like use. I would just twitch text. You know yeah. what I mean? It was just like a. It's 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 it's, it's such a fun. I, I think like maybe like if you're like a fan of like the Matrix and shit like yeah. that, you kind of like really kind of gravitate towards that style like that. Well, then you can nuance it too. Like just because you're using uh, some plugin doesn't necessarily mean it's going to look like everybody else's. Like the totally. way that you use it is really like in your hands and. Hopefully these tools allow you to do things quickly and get to the place that you want in your mind, you know. So yeah, 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 yeah. It, you know, those things are infinitely helpful when it when you're under a tight deadline. I think I, I can't remember exactly, but we didn't have long before this Coachella house was gonna happen. And I think it was weeks. I yeah, think. maybe yeah. Like a couple of weeks. And and I was working on all the logistics with, you know, I brought in my buddy Colin from yep. uh, New York. He was like one of my partners in crime in in Chicago and a guy I could trust to do an event like this and I needed help, you know, cause we were going to be driving the truck in with the gear, the trussing, the projectors, running all the cabling. And, uh, yeah, I needed somebody and, and you hopped right on board and helped out. Uh, and, oh, yeah. and Colin came in from New York and, you know, we, we just pulled it all together. You know, it's just like late nights, you know, you just grinding. And, um, I remember staying at late at revolt offices with Adrian until like midnight or something, just getting the workout. And, uh, but it's it's rewarding. So the the day of the party came through. You know the the crazy thing. I I don't know if you remember this, but you know Coachella and like that Indio Valley and all that. They get like wild dust storms sometimes. Yeah. Kind of like Burning Man as yeah. dust storms. And I, yeah. I like you're in the desert. Like you gotta kind expect of expect them. it. Yeah. But it, that that night, it like the sun went down and it, the wind started kicking, and we're setting up and and I think. We had just barely got the whole thing set up, like routed all the cables. We only had like the couple hours before the party to actually get this thing set. Mm -hmm. And the dust just started coming in hot. And I could just see in the projector light, like little particles flying through. And I'm just like, oh, God, this is going to be a hell of a night. I remember like, you know, just like walking around with a drink and like the bottom half of your drink was just like dirt and Covered, dust. Yeah, dude. <laughs> so that, that that was an interesting night. And the you know? and the, the, the truss was pretty high up, I think, too. It was like, what, like 15, 20 feet? Yeah. At, at least the one in the front. I remember the one in yeah. the front door was high because you guys wanted to make it so that like uh, when people walked in the front door, they wouldn't shadow out. So you get the yeah. thing really, really high. Yeah. A big thing in projection mapping is you've got to watch out for shadows, like yeah. anything to obscure your projectors. It's, it gets tricky, you know, sometimes. And so. I think, for, yeah, for the front door, we did, like, double stack two truss beams on top of each other and then had to, like, lift up this heavy, like, you know, theater-sized projector yeah, up there. So huge. I was help I was glad it wasn't just myself. I had some good hands in, in to help out. But, yeah, it was wild. Um, so, yeah, just getting up high, avoiding any shadows. And I think we mapped over by the, – there was, like, a pool wall that we mapped. It was, like, a circle, right? It was, yeah. like, a circle thing. So for, for anyone who, who's listening who doesn't understand what projection mapping is, it's basically – uh, making visuals, plugging into a projector, and then shoot, shooting the projector at a wall or something, and then just cropping it so that it fits within whatever space you want it to 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 fill, right? Exactly. Which I always thought was, I think you were the one who told me, like, because I, I always, I, I I've always seen projection mapping and been like, the technology that they must have to make this shit is like, it has to be some crazy ultra nerd shit. Yeah. And you're like, oh no no, look, it's just like Photoshop, drag, yeah. drag, drag, drag. I was like. Yeah. Oh, what? Like, uh, obviously, it's it's not that easy. But sure. it's, but but the, the the cool part is when you start conceptualizing and yep. being like, oh, we can we use a different type of texture here, sure. or the or play with the angle mm -hmm. of the of the building and thing you're projecting on, which is yeah, mind blowing. I, I think to do it right, I, I mean, like, why why do you have this projector? We're trying to change the face of something in the in the real world. Like, right, a lot of times designers make things for like the TV or advertisements or the side of a bus or the screens, like mobile screens. But when do animators and artists get to like put their work on the side of a parking garage or totally. something like in the middle of a city, mm -hmm. right? And like just take it over. And I think that's what really excited me about projection mapping is that you can design what you like to make for a specific space yeah. and, and play with shadows and, and play with the features uh, of the space. So. I think it's awesome. The tools are not that incredibly hard to learn. Like I, you know, I could run somebody through it, and then you just unleash your creativity in that space. So yeah. 
it's it's nice that it doesn't have to be so complicated these days. Yeah, yeah. and it's almost like it's almost like uh, it's like like digital tagging. Yeah, it's like you can like graffiti up a wall, but like not ruin it. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, I remember like Ivan, uh, the creative director at Revolt, was yep. just like, yeah, let's just go projection bomb like in the middle of like <laughs> the Hollywood, just like let's go hit a building, and yeah. I'm like, all right, man, we need generators, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and like. I, I remember you telling me that and the concept you're like, yeah, like I, I, I got a little hatchback. I can just like I'll build a thing and put the projector on yeah. the roof. And you, I think we're, we're actually looking at spots. You're like, oh, look, the right above Mel's or some shit. Like yeah. there's a white wall up there. We can just blast it. Yeah. And so I had an idea and I'll, I'll, I'll show you later to see what you think. But um, so in my living room, mm -hmm. I have a projector that's just um, like uh, uh, underneath a, a coffee table, basically. And it's a short throw. Sure. And so um. At nighttime, when I put on like the living room light, the little basically, if if I turn on like four specific lights, and then I have the projector on, and there's a scene where it's all black, and then like an object in the middle, uh -huh. it looks like it's just part of the wall. Oh yeah, because you don't see like the the edges. Sure. So that's what, and correct me if somebody's already done this, but I so what I was thinking was try to figure out a way where you could like hide all these projectors like in an apartment basically kind of like what i have mm -hmm. and it would basically just be like it would look like the walls are moving sure. you would never see like the line or you would never yeah. you could never see that it was a projector yeah no hopefully i mean that's the goal it's like all, uh, all this stuff is trickery it's all magic right i think that's like what pe gets people excited about it too is it's like how much can we fool our audience and you know, you've got your your really boring projection maps that are just like, oh, a rectangle on the wall and they're playing some movie, you know. Totally. But like you, what you're saying is putting it on black, it creates like this um, illusion that there's just something living in the wall. Exactly. Because anytime you're hitting it, the wall with black, you don't see any of the – hopefully you don't see any of like the illumination. Yep. Um, so I've even seen uh, not just projectors. Uh, lately I was at um, – crossed uh music festival down in san, san diego. diego and one of their stages had uh this like see-through led wall so like there's gaps in between the led rows and so it kind of gives this illusion that you can actually see through the screen oh, because shit. of the the, the millimeter space. pitch in between each led but from a distance it comes off as like an actual animation and a full image yeah and uh so they design content, I think, around being on black. So let's say you had like some hand animating in, which I think they did. <laughs> I think, if I remember correctly, that's that, that's yeah. their logo. I think, right? It's yeah, the, it's yeah. It's anyway, so they so they had like these hands animating in, but they were on black. So from a distance, I'm seeing through the screen to the background. There's like palm trees, and then you're seeing these hands like come out of nowhere because mm. you know LED screens are really good at creating like negative space like when the when it's black the leds are like off mm. so it, it was wild to see that like what the, what the potential is there with just an led wall that's kind of see-through yeah so i i think you know projectors are amazing as well but you know it's all it's all about how you strategize you know how, totally. what, what are you trying to pull off and hopefully it's a, a great illusion yeah you know? yeah 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 that's uh yeah that's i i, I never thought about it like that with, with like projection mapping and projector shit you're just it's like magic yeah you're yeah. trying to like give like give like people the illusion of like oh what like you know what i mean like, like what's going on there why is that building shifting yeah just slightly? <laughs> like twitching or glitching or <laughs> zooming past shit or speaking of yeah. crossed um you know it's my second year back there i've got some friends that i go visit and um uh it it's an interesting scene and they it's it's right down in the shoreline uh in san diego i don't know if you've been there before been, yeah. yeah so there's like this awesome harbor and then they have this really art deco um capital building or something and they they actually do it really minimal like the the aesthetics yep. are, are not over the top and at night they cast what's called like a leco light or a gobo mm -hmm. which is basically like a, a motorized focusable light and it's got a pattern that's cut out of it and they they blast it uh, up on the side of the building and they kind of cover the entire building with this like leco pattern mm. and i don't i i know in their logo they have like a snake and snake scales and yeah. i think they're part of their gobo or this little like cookie cutter um is like this kind of snaky scale texture and then it's it, so they don't really even need any like um, complex projectors. They just coated this entire building in this like like snakeskin almost Dope. pattern, and 
to me, and, and the lights can move because they're on this motorized mechanism, yeah. and it 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 creates a great illusion. There's like all the shadowing that's happening from the lights, and the, the it really highlights this beautiful art deco building and it doesn't it's not over the top it doesn't take away from it it just adds to the space so it seems like it seems like the anti of like the one that they have in miami during mm -hmm. like ultra yeah. and like my music week it's yeah. like a I think they basically just fucking put a LED screen against the side of the hotel. Yeah. And it's like a girl like dancing or whatever the <laughs> like fuck. Crazy you know what I mean? over the top. And like th that's just like, OK, that's obvious. You know what I mean? And yeah. so like what to what you're saying is like more like nuance and subtle types of like yeah. of, of visuals. Yeah, because it'd be dope. Oh, ah! what's, up? Ah! what's up, baby girl? Breaking into the podcast. <laughs> yeah, you're in here. Was BBC working. Radio 1 in the mix. <laughs> that's good. No, you're good. You're chilling. I miss you. <laughs> we're, get, we're gonna catch up. We're gonna yeah, catch yeah, up. We're catching up. <laughs> this special girl. <laughs> Creeping, in. <laughs> Creeping in on you. Classic. Um, yeah, man. That's a that's like a that's a really cool thing. And I think you were, I think you're the first friend that I had that really did visuals. You know what I mean? Because like I would always like I I I've never created visuals, but I would like grab stuff, put stuff on top of it, kind of like manipulate shit. Yeah. And so I, I never really had anybody to really geek out with. And, yeah. You know, it was, it was more like people like who kind of, knew, they kind of knew what I was talking about, yeah. but didn't really know yeah. what the fuck was going on. So it was like, it was nice to get to know you and like really like pick your brain like, okay, how do you do, how do you do this? How do you, how do, you do that? Sure. Like, um, yeah, you know, you can like, you can really boil a lot of the stuff down to like production techniques and it gets really nerdy, but like, you know, there's certain ways to pull things off. If you have an idea, there's a certain technique to achieve what you're trying to go for in animation. So totally, it's a it's an endless field. Like it's such a rabbit hole, and, and that's why I love it too. It's like I'm never gonna be done learning. You yeah, know, so. yeah, and it's it's literally always progressing. The 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 projectors are getting um, better resolution. They're getting smaller. Mm -hmm. They're getting portal. Like I just uh, Indiegogoed. I think it was like 250 bucks, a 4K projector that's like this big. Oh my god. Battery powered, rechargeable, oh speaker god. built in. The future. Plot twist. <laughs> plot twist. It was supposed to be delivered like 3 months ago. <laughs> and people are going off in the comments like scam scam and like fucking class action lawsuit and like classic Indiegogo. Dude, I was like I was like oh, whatever like it's too it's a lot of You're money. You're an investor. You're an investor in, in the future. Totally. Thank you, Alika. Totally. For putting the money in. You're welcome, <laughs> motherfuckers. You're fucking. Actually, let me check this to make sure. <laughs> Man, this. I was saying earlier, this this studio room that you have just is always changing. I've been back a few times to your apartment, and <laughs> like it's this uh, evolving space. Yeah, man. It's it's what I always wanted. Yeah. In my own, like it's pseudo man cave studio. Yeah, it's great, dude. It's it's so funny you say that. I was uh I was like I was because it's like it looks kind of clean right now, but it's usually just like playing shows, cables everywhere. Yeah. They're like there's just shit everywhere. <laughs> but like I, I was I was uh I was home alone and I was cl cleaning up this room by myself one day, and I was like looking around and I was like damn this is like exactly what i like always wanted it, yeah. like you know growing up and like tinkering with like computers and like sure. music shit and i was like fuck i, I kind of have it i kind of have it all now like and it was just like a cool little moment i was like fuck it's like <laughs> it just it, it, it I, I didn't really think about it just all kind of like you keep buying little things yeah. and fucking with stuff and like like it's, these little um these uh what are they called little uh, park hands park hands yeah, yeah these little park hand lights about like 20 dollars on amazon yeah and um yeah, I'm just kind of like, oh, have you seen this thing yet? The mixed plate sign? Oh, yeah, oh, that thing's got this, time. like, animated uh, backlight to it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. There's, like, an so LED sick. inside and then, like, a oh, shaka thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, shout yeah. out to, uh, shout out to uh, Mateos the Greek. He, uh, he hooked that up. This thing was insane. I picked, like, the most complicated font possible. Because yeah, he had to cut this out with, like, a jigsaw. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yo, dude, do you understand how a jigsaw works? Like, <laughs> yeah, like yo, do you want to get in on this routing? <laughs> Like, what do you think I'm a machine? <laughs> I, know, I, felt, I felt so bad, but like he was down because he was like he was like oh, it's like it's gonna take me a long time, but it'll look cool because it'll yeah, look like kind of like a like a, a paint brushy kind of thing. I like, love that because you just bring it to any booth you guys are at yeah, and you just take over. Top. Yeah, boom, the mix plate. Yeah, here we are. Boom, slamming it. That thing was actually crazier to cut out too because like um so like naturally when I had the idea I called my dad. I was yeah. like, Dad. I want to do this thing like a shaka and like I want to like print it out and like put it in plexiglass and cut it out. And he was like, he's like, 
you want to cut angles in yeah. plexiglass? He's I was like, like, boy, you need to get your ass to Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, he 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 was like, he was like, I don't think you can do that. He's like, yeah. he's like, the way I cut plexiglass is like, you you score it yeah. and you break it. You know what uh, I mean? Like, you, so it's just straight lines. Yeah. And he was just like, just print it out, put it like in a square, and then just glue it together. And I was like, that's whack, dad. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying. I'm trying to make it like a thing. Yeah. And then so 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 me and Matt like we did a whole bunch of just like YouTubing and Google searching, and we found this tool where it's like a um. It's uh, it's not. It's, it doesn't spin, mm -hmm. but it just vibrates. Oh wow! Like really, really like slow. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just brrr, and we found this bit that works on plastic. Wow! And so that thing, that that was actually probably harder than the wood thing because it was just like the plexiglass is pretty expensive, <laughs> and we we're just like, can you fuck technique. this up? Yeah, and like, but like, yeah. You guys pull it off, and then you were like, fuck you, Deb. We can do this. Yeah. We're the next generation <laughs> of plexiglass. <laughs> he was like, holy shit, you did it. I was yeah. like, I was like. It's like it was. It was scary. It was. He was right. There was a yeah. couple times where like we we're going. It was like, and we're like, yeah, oh the whole thing. fuck yeah. And even now, like I'm so scared to bring that thing around. Like, just like don't drop it. <laughs> like, you got to keep tinkering though. That's what's fun about the whole thing is like, yeah, keep playing with all the toys. That's my desk at home looks like a big mess all the time, but it's like organized chaos. Because <laughs> if I put it away, I'm not gonna think about it, right? Totally. So like when I'm at, when I'm at home, I have some free time. I just have it all spread out, ready, ready to, to go. fire up. You know. And um, uh, you obviously do visuals, but you also do music as well. I, I tinker, you know, I'm not, uh, it's hard to say I even make music. It's like I make sounds or something, but uh, yeah, it's, it's Everyone fun. just making sounds yeah. until like, you know until what I mean? Until you get something until you, you like. Until you get something, yeah, yeah. Until everyone's like, oh, this is cool, you know what I yeah. mean? That's what everybody's doing. Yeah, I, I look at it more as like a hobby and like, it, it, man, you can just lose yourself in it too. You can really like just tune out the world and, and focus on like this one like drum line or, or like shaping just the right sound mm -hmm. from your synthesizer so yeah i picked up like a machine uh, mk2 recently machine's great it's, it's it, it like really focuses you into just like like small amounts of instrumentation and focuses you you know i think with some of these programs like ableton it's like that yeah. shit is endless whereas yeah. machine kind of like here just stay yeah. within this little stay thing within this um this this pattern or like load, yeah. up, load up your like 16 pads and and then just like play those so yeah i think that was good for me to get into and and machines kind of like it's a little bit complicated software like it's hard i went to fire it up the other day for my friend and like show him a track i'd working on but I'm like, yeah, just give me a minute, dude. And like tinkering <laughs> knobs and like, okay, I'm almost there. Just get one more second. And like, yeah, it's just like this German software. I feel like it's just like overly mm. complex, but, but like it makes sense once you, it's like, I think the guy that sold it to me was like, yo man, just my biggest tip, like read the entire manual. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, I get it now. Totally. Like don't tinker, don't tinker around. Just like read the full manual. Speaking of which, I think uh, I got a couple of your tracks loaded up. Oh no. You're going to do this. You're going to put me on the spot. Oh, yeah. Oh god, they got the side cut. Yeah, this is the Man, this thing's like a seven-minute track. I think it's just like honestly a. Uh... Oh, straight in. oh, you know what? Hold up. Oh, this sounds nice. <laughs> oh, Jackmaster, he's bringing it with like the underground UK sound. <laughs> he's like. <laughs> I felt so bad because I only recently started this. I only heard this like a couple days ago. Like, Dude, this is actually pretty fucking cool. Clearly working on shaping bass. Yeah. Like, how do I get this kick to just fuck people up? To like how to automate effects, you know, like to, yeah, to have yeah, them yeah. Uh, to you know drop levels during a certain time. Mm -hmm. With this track, I was really just like trying to work on little techniques, you know, like oh, how do I how do I automate this effect to happen over a course of X amount of time? And you can do automation within machine. Yeah, so like even on the dial itself, you like hold one button, and then as you as it's playing back, you can kind of work the dial, mm -hmm. and it records that, as, you know, and you can adjust the timeline and all that. It's, a lot of these things are similar to animation. You know, you're working with a timeline, keyframes. Key key yeah, yeah change over time. Moments. Change over time. Yeah, like at 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 this moment, it's this, and then mm -hmm. ten seconds later, it's that, and just like yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you know, just looking at what a lot of artists do that that I like, mm -hmm. you know, and trying to take that and then take it another level further. But you know, I just 
with anything it takes time to to get really good and, and to make something that you're proud of and you want to put out you know that's always a tough spot how do i how do i finish this track how do i master it but totally and it's like a i mean it's like a crazy thing too because i mean like I've sunk in most of my time doing video shit, shooting, editing, blah, blah, blah. Sure. You've sunk most of your time into making visuals and, like, projection mapping and shit. Mm-hmm. And so there's, like, this common thread that I find, like, with our generation where, like, we're so ADD that we want to, like, learn how to do everything. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, sure. oh, learn, make music, DJ the music, make the visuals, project sure. the visuals, <laughs> like, be, be my own photographer, be my own social media manager. Uh-huh. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's such an interesting time that we can, like, we can all do so much, like. True. Like this, this wouldn't happen back in the day. You were yeah. either a producer or you were like a filmmaker. Yeah, you sunk your whole life into just doing the one thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's good, like to you know, jack of all trades but master of none. So I, totally. I get the personality where it's like, yo, the, I, yeah, I'm like a, I'm an oil painter, and that's just like what I do. I spend every waking hour just trying to be a better oil painter. I get that, but you know, to me, in my free time, I like to to experiment and dabble and and you know like maybe i'm doing something in audio but then it teaches me something that i can do better in, in visual making animation or visuals so yeah, i think it's good to play and i i kind of break it down to in, in our generation now it's like you have your consumers and you have your creators yep. and like which side do you want to be on it, like do you want to watch youtube all day and just get, like or, or go on netflix and and consume 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 facebook's yeah Instagram yeah scrolling. Do you, like there's and and yeah th- like Hopefully there's consumers to be out there like watching our stuff. That's fun. It's great to have that feedback. But it, I think too, it's great to be like a, to create something and not just be a consumer. Totally. And and so I think like if anything, I want to pass on to people. It's just like uh, in your in your free time, just try to make something that's like you and and whatever it is. So and put out there instead of just being a consumer. Totally, it's, it's very easy to get lost in things these days. Very ADD world. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I mean. We were just talking about that the other, yeah about that the other day is like whenever have you sat down and watched a nine hour movie yeah or ten hour movie sure. that's that's one season of a show on Netflix sure sure and we've done that yeah. I've sat there all <laughs> day and just House of Cards just boom through the whole thing yeah. and it's such like a um I think it's cool because I appreciate like the long format of it you know sure. what I mean like. Sure. Because like, you can really, really tell a a story. Like, we we we've all seen those movies where they're 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 trying to shrink a humongous story into like a two and a half hour window, and there's all these holes in the story, and like you're, you're you're confused about what the fuck happened. But now with like with the format of like Netflix and streaming of TV shows, it's like you can tell a fucking tale. True. <laughs> like, true. Yeah. Yeah, I think like uh, we have all these new mediums now that to 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 view content like with with streaming content service and um yeah if you want to make this like condense a book down into like a 12 episodic run you can do it and i think it was like i was listening to uh uh, oh like nick kroll was on a rogan rogan recently he was talking about that too he's like in the tv days we'd have to work around commercial tv timeouts like we we had you, you know as a writer you'd have to build those tv timeouts into your Story, story and it had to be like cliffhanger, cliffhanger yeah like cliffhanger. Ni- 19 minutes leading into the commercial break and then you want them to come back from commercial break but now it's like he, he was talking about working with netflix and he's like they give us like pretty much free reign we can do like a 20 minute piece we could do uh, an hour long we could do a series you know so like it's it's wide open and that's great i i think like you're gonna get a lot, lot more um artistry out of that totally. than, than putting someone in a box like yo man we need you to do your comedy special but like 20 minute chunks at a time it's like how do you design around that <laughs> yeah that's it's it's such an it's such an i guess i mean you can't really call it archaic but i feel like yeah. it's archaic because it's like even like at, at, at revolt like um we're still doing stuff for television like yeah. so like now now my job is i edit um a news show it's sure. like a 15 or 12 minute 15 minute news show yeah. and it has to fit in this window yeah this 12 minute window and sure. it's so frustrating because it's like yeah, it's a skill in itself for the producers just to to hit those marks. Totally, right? and, totally. And to fill the content and make sure everyone's like your hosts are moving on time and yeah, it's so funny. Usually, what it comes down to is just me sitting there and like <laughs> freaking out because they need the fucking episode in like twenty minutes. Oh, I'm like, God. oh, what do I cut? You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, it's just such a shitty like television with the whole time block thing. You're right. It is a it's it's an amazing skill to like learn how to do that because that yeah. takes a lot of like, that's like, that, that's like a producer. Yeah. Really, really like grinding. 
but it's just so stupid because it doesn't it doesn't let shit breathe yeah. you know like obviously the new show can't just be whatever it can't just keep going like willy-nilly but yeah. i don't know man rogan and like Chrysler, they do like three hour podcasts and it's entertaining as fuck yeah you know what i mean like i i, I can i i, I I don't need to take a break from it. Yeah. But maybe th- there's a difference between like te- like visual media and like audio media. You can sure. kind of like you can go you can have like a lot maybe like the the attention span is a lot shorter when it's like visual cuz yeah. you you're sitting there looking at something versus yeah. something in your ears where you can be like jogging, driving. Well yeah, you got like someone sitting on their couch with a remote in the hand and they can just flip to the next channel. So I think like you're mm. just trying to cater to the, to that in the space rather than I'm into this culture. Oh, they got something on Netflix about this culture I'm into. Yeah. I'm, I choose to sh- watch the show, and I'm going to sit down. I'm going to pay attention to it. Totally. So it, it's designing for a different medium. It, it's tough these days, too, doing a lot of commercial work where they, they're they like, yeah, we need to come in with a bang in the first five seconds. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it's fi- oh, we're, it's only going to be 15 to 30 seconds, which I like short format, so it works for me. But Totally. Y- you know, they, they just want, like, flashy attention grabbing, blah, blah, blah. And you're just like, all right, now you're putting all these constraints on what we're going to make versus something interesting you know? yeah so yeah it's, it gets tricky totally so yeah like how you know i didn't get to ask you yet like how's revolt going um you're working in the news and just you know cranking content i know back when we were at revolt i really admired your ability to just get shit done you know uh i remember you going out on late night shoots coming back with the footage going through the footage you didn't have an assistant uh, I still editor. don't have an assistant. You don't have an assistant <laughs> editor. Nobody has an assistant. You know, you're just you're going through all the footage, finding all the probably like the key moments, and then like within the next day, you you would have an edit ready to go. And it, this, I mean, I remember seeing your work and being like, this isn't a bullshit edit. This isn't somebody who is just like trying. Like you slapping were, it together. Yeah, yeah. You, I think, was awesome to see you work. Is like you, you knew from the beginning before you guys even shot until the end, like what you were after. I think For that's sure. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, and that was a crazy time because that's when I was working with Puff. Yeah. Like directly. Oh, and God. so I was just like, holy fuck. He's on another level, too, because he just comes in and you either do your job or you don't. Yeah. And if you can't, get out of here. Yeah. He's ruthless yeah. with that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Which is good. You know, like, uh, yeah. He's, he's got the money to pay you for it. And, yeah. like, you either come with your A game or he's going to find someone else. It's, it's, kind of the way it should be it's a yeah, it's definitely efficient yeah it's stressful but efficient yeah it's like yeah there's sometimes no these guys like shoot from the moon though and they don't realize the yeah. the logistics of it all like yeah. they're they're not used to being told no yeah. like do <laughs> not tell yeah. me no yeah. <laughs> there's like footage of like puff puff in like a meeting with like andy Schoen, which is yeah. like the, he was a former president of mtv sure and like andy's trying to be nice being like yeah okay like i get what you're saying sure but like what you're saying isn't feasible you know yeah. what i mean you see like everyone like oh shit just told him no just told him no oh shit oh shit oh shit what's the backlash gonna be <laughs> yeah like oh but um but yeah no it's, it's it's been cool man they um i honestly think i i hope revolt's doing okay like mm-hmm. did you hear that they like laid off like 30 pe- 35 people? yeah it was sad to hear that you know like they went through like a restructuring i yeah. know i've still got a lot of good friends that are doing great work mm-hmm. there so it's tough yeah i mean like n- no business these days is uh invincible to any kind of like downsizing downscaling especially when it comes to the television business oh yeah yeah Yeah. it was like i mean i'm surprised it didn't happen sooner yeah Uh, it was like like just the 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 amount of money it costs to run the tv studio at hollywood highland alone sure i'm like how much (laughs) how much millions of dollars are we spending to like and we don't even use it that much yeah i mean it's just like holy shit yeah Um, i i get a feeling like you know, there was a lot of mismanagement that kind of happened and, Absolutely. and not pointing a finger at any one person. But I just think sometimes like you just need like this, uh, a good person to spearhead. And, you know, yeah, I remember that's I looked to Ivan, you know, when I was in the creative department Ivan and, was the and, best. and yeah, he kept the ship running and, totally. and smooth and kept cranking out content and holding people accountable. Yeah. You know, yeah. and the minute that stops happening you you get in some some muddy waters so it's tough man especially a big organization like that yeah working with comcast or these big network providers Mm -hmm. yeah 
it's almost like you could. I always just thought like fold the whole cable network and go straight to the digital, web. Digital, yeah, straight just, digital. Just what straight are we doing on TV? Nobody's yeah. watching it on TV. It's kind of like well, who who's some big leaders on that? I mean, like Pitchfork went it was always a digital publication. I felt like maybe um, they had some new uh, print print ads or something. But but yeah, it wasn't ever television. Yeah, and then like Vice before Viceland was just, and I think that they were they were doing pretty successfully just yeah, being on straight digital. to the web. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Red Bull, yeah. Red Bull is cool because Red Bull is kind of like a little bit in the middle because yeah. they, it's it's all digital, but they also you can also stream it on the web too. Yeah. So it, it can be TV if you want it to be. True, you just click like the just play me shit. You yeah. know what I mean? Or I want to watch just surfing or just skating. Exactly, which I think is probably like I feel like that model is probably pretty good for like most networks if mm -hmm. you can like give them the option of just like just play me stuff. Yeah, or just let just you know what i mean like having, having that option i think is and actually i think i'm like i invented that shit i think they're already doing that with yeah. cable i think you can like on demand or you can whatever you know yeah what I mean? it's so. this weird gray area like a lot of people still have cable boxes and that's where they yeah. go to to get fed their their content but mm -hmm. yeah i think i mean the thing with the revolt to me is like you you have a following look at they have numbers there's people watching or like there's people that have interest in the in the culture and, sure. and hip-hop and what puff's doing or W who's the newcomers and so you just need to kind of shift that that market but yeah i'm sure there's much smarter people than i in, in the top <laughs> trying to figure all that out than us two assholes <laughs> yeah <laughs> critiquing uh, from my armchair <laughs> critiquing multi like level of fucking national <laughs> like yo shit. do you know what kind of deals we have with comcast and time warner cable <laughs> these guys we signed on for years <laughs> yeah no shit yeah, um, but uh, so back to the revolt thing. I I was one of the people that got let go. Mm -hmm. um, oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, it was it like it was weird. It was the first time that I didn't have like a full time job since I was like I don't know, it's like 17. Wow. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I've been always like I I, I was working it, during high school, then like went to film school out here for six months, got a job immediately. Yeah, came back to L. A. Got a job. Yeah, you know, I I just been constantly had a full time job the whole. So it was like a weird moment. Like I. I, I was like really depressed for like yeah. three or four days. I mean, like a week. I was just like, well, dude. I mean, you put in with like five years or something like five that. Five years, and, yeah. and you were like their guy. I felt like like uh, anytime Puff wanted anything done, it he, they turned to you because they knew they could trust you. I felt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah me, 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 Jo, and Video Chris. It was like we were like yeah. the like the three dudes. Like, yo, Puff needs some shit. Like, hit those dudes up. They'll, yeah. they'll get it done. Yeah. So yeah, it was like a, but it was weird. Like I, I've never felt. I never have. Ne I never had like depression like that before. I was just kind of yeah. like. Um, but it's been really nice because they um, they cut me like a really nice severance check. Yeah. And so I've I haven't had I haven't I've, I've been working there part time just two days a week. Yeah. And it's been like paying the bills and like I just been chilling like That's working cool. on music and making shit. it work. Yeah. yeah. And so like it's been kind of nice. It's like a nice little break. Yeah. So. Yeah. Sometimes you need that man. Like and it and it'll especially it'll light a fire up, up under your ass. I Absolutely. I mean you know i feel like a lot of people have been there before like especially in la y your project gets canceled or yeah. you got to shift gears and and if you've been you got comfortable and you were doing it it's it's really easy to get comfortable when you're at like a full-time spot oh yeah for um, five years yeah i was chilling yeah. i knew exactly how much i was gonna get paid every two weeks and i'm just like you know what i mean it was yeah. just like yeah i was just working within this like this constraint and so you're absolutely True. right it was a big it was wake up it was like I, I realized like wow I haven't like talked to the people that I used to freelance with and like yeah. grind like I haven't talked to them in five years since I got yeah. the job I was like damn I've, I've been fucking up I gotta like yeah get gotta back, get back to that you yeah know what I mean? it, it's tough it's like it sucks to lose some of your contacts when you go into like one project for yeah. five years and and you're not available for uh, external projects I, I always try to keep myself open but you can only commit so much to yourself that you know like you're gonna be able to pull off like what am I I'm gonna come home after an eight hour day and then i'm gonna put like four hours into <laughs> some personal projects and then do two hours into this like side project you know so yeah it's tough to keep up with but yeah i mean when you're fully freelancing it's a grind too always totally. but it keeps you kind of sharp you're like always looking to what's the next project yeah. you're trying to do your best on the last project because it's going to sell you on yeah. the next project you're going to work on so mm -hmm. you know the the freelance uh world is a grind it's tough but it, it can be really rewarding you get to put so many different projects underneath your 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 belt and have like a great ar arsenal so yeah your, your your reel just looks like oh you've done a whole bunch of yeah. shit like yeah and I mean, to be honest, like LA is a great place to do it. If you're hungry and yeah. you're coming out here and you've got, you're ready to work and you got a skill, uh, you know, like, like you did basically, you got swooped right in. And, and I think to hear that, like they're stripping back the company and like, 
you know, cut you down. I, I, that's tough. Like, I don't, of course, there's some guy looking at numbers at the top. Like, Absolutely. he doesn't realize the, the, the benefits they have having someone like you in. So that's what it looked like when, yeah. like, we, because, like, obviously when they, 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 <laughs> so let me tell you a funny story about when everybody got let go. <laughs> it, <laughs> so Vokane describes it like, he, he's like, if I could imagine what it was like, during the Holocaust, oh when it was God. like these people got on this bus and these oh people got on gosh. that bus, it was like that. Like they sent emails to everybody. It was yeah. just like, like the people who weren't getting fired report to like the the, the TV studio, and yeah. everybody who wasn't getting fired like, get the report fuck to out. the <laughs> yeah report to the. And so like, but like you know how there's like there's the, the crosswalk on Highland. Oh yeah, or oh on, on on uh, yeah on Highland, and it was like. People walking, people walking across, across from each other like, and like being like, uh, hey, dude, and like, what about me? It's confusing. It was like, it, oh, it was like, man. oh, you're in this group, you're in that group. What a mess. Oh man, it was like, uh, um, so 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 after the whole thing, we, they told us blah blah blah. So I, obviously, it was like, let's go get fucked up. Yeah. So we all we all meet at Jameson's, and um, we're all sitting around having drinks, and we look around and we're just like, you know what those fuckers did? They put all of our names in an Excel spreadsheet, sort by yeah, sort by salary click drag oh yeah that's what it seemed like that that's that's, that's if what you it looked were to like, like put it t the pieces together yeah yeah, yeah. kind of like who gets paid the most that's and like tough. yeah so but it, it 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 makes sense for five years revolt kind of just ran amok it yeah. was kind of like a no just do whatever like we used to just figure out like dude we used to just come up with our own projects and just go do them like yeah. i'll be like hey tiff uh i'm gonna go shoot this festival called lightning in a bottle i'll bring back some footage like yeah. cool no problem <laughs> like, ahead, just like I, yeah, yeah like there's no really rules and yeah. so it was like cool that we got to do that but there was no way that was going to be financially viable that it's like it's it's just, there was no there was no brand sent you know because yeah. now revolt is just hip-hop unapologetically hip-hop which we all talked about from the beginning i was I was happy that it was all genre because I like dance music. Yeah. But it was like, yo, Puff's running this shit. It should just be hip hop yeah. and rap straight up. The culture they know best and they yeah. can put on. Yeah. Yeah. And the and the culture that they can they they have the most like weight in and mm -hmm. people will actually watch. Yeah. So Well man, I'm I'm sorry to hear that. But I you oh, know that like it's, it's kinda like in my opinion you grew out of that and like now you're ready to to take on a lot of other things so absolutely yeah it's it's fun to keep you know and then you land in some other opportunity that you're like holy smokes i've been wanting to do this my whole life and now i'm able to i remember um yeah i i left revolt and you know was trying to get back on a really another fun like entertainment music project and um it was wild i i like reached out to somebody on craigslist um this guy Lee Duck, he's this great like uh, lighting designer and uh, equipment guy for stage design in in the Los Angeles area, and he was just looking for someone who was interested in DMX lighting and like some animation and stuff. And then little did I know he like, you know, we do like rough introductions. I'm telling him what I'm all about with animation and like how I'd love to learn more about production and 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 shows. And then. You know, I'm thinking like maybe this will pan out to something, and I get a call like a couple of weeks later, and he's like, "Hey, I got, I have an artist for you. Um, I think you'd be a great fit. Like we can put you out on the road." And I'm just like, "What? Like, yo, man, I'm hungry. Let's do this." And uh, little did I know it was Halsey. Halsey, yeah, Boom. just like dropped in my <laughs> lap, and uh, you know, it was a great experience. Um, just like I said, like pivoting from one thing that you've done for so long to something totally new. Totally. And the the team was great. They all took me under their wing. I was so green at that time. I had never done a tour. Yeah, that was your first tour, right? Yeah, like no, never been on the road with like a touring artist, musician. Yep. And a lot of those guys come from the very bottoms, like doing warp tour and like grinding and like driving a bus around to different cities. And I just got plugged in, luckily, with Lee. It was wild. We were over in Burbank working on the show. I, we had like two weeks to put the show together and, and, and not even because the second week, you know, Ashley, who's was Halsey, yep. came in and, and was ready to rehearse. So I'm in the back of my mind. I'm like this big, awesome pop star is going to come in <laughs> and she's either going to love it or hate it or something. And I'm yeah. like, I have never met her. I'm like nervous. And we're creating this project. And, um, you know, it was a hustle. It, it was fun. You know, like like I said, it keeps you sharp. And yeah, we I think we. You know, sp I spent a full week animating. It was like a sixty-minute show, Jesus. and you're just trying to figure out like what tricks do I know that I can like make really cool content, but it's not going to take too long. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a big render farm or anything to do like crazy 3D graphics. Yeah, and I was just trying to figure out what what suits her music and her show. Yeah. We had like we had like four LED pillars on stage with her, and that was great. 
Yeah, because you, because you, if I remember correctly, you had four LED pillars, and then it was, it was also light, DMX lights, right? That yeah. You were, that you were. So I was working with the sound is, or I'm sorry, the lighting designer, um, this guy Ryan, and he he worked with me in rehearsals, and we, you know, I was trying to like match what he was doing with with lighting, and mm-hmm. and there were moments where it was like, all right, no animation, let's just do all full lights. The mm-hmm. the lights come up big, so. It was like really fun to collaborate with the, with the lighting designer and and then to put together this show. Hell yeah, yeah. But you know, like like I said, just going back to you know, you just don't know what the next opportunity is. So yeah, it, it's fun to get kicked out sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember. I remember there was a story that you were telling me where like uh, the power went out or some shit. Oh god, that was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you know, in this. The entertainment industry, there's no, there's like no room for failure. Yeah. Like you cannot mess up. They're like, it is on you, and you are accountable to make this show go on. And so th- you have this like enormous weight, and like that's why you know there's always like a sound check that happens earlier in the day before the show. But um, we were doing for for this this crazy night, we were doing a like a radio show, like a holiday radio show, like one of the local radio stations like gets a bunch of artists, a list artists together, and and does a show, and they give you these crazy like time slots like you're gonna play like a condensed 30 minute set and then literally for this show i think it was in like um it was up in the bay area it was like oracle arena and they had this crazy turntable stage so they'd have like one artist playing Mm. and then they didn't even go into like a um a sound they didn't even go into like an intermission or anything it was just like literally one artist playing and then the turntable (laughs) spins the other artist out and then like they're ready to go and they're playing their set and like audio fades out fades in like there's no gap and i mean it's a cool format right like everyone's good to go but that's a lot of stress on logistics to get that right and you know i got flown in that day um from where we were at with the bus we had no none of our like gear because it was like a fly show so like we most of our gear travels around with the bus Mm. and this is a fly in fly out show we're gonna do it for a couple hours you know that night and so i i have like a stripped down package i've just got like my laptop with all the animations on it and i'm coming in blind i don't know like what screens i'm gonna have access to so we get in that day i like i like how to take the bard over to (laughs) from the airport oh from God. from sfo uh, over like uh, like first time in the shit. bay area i'm like trying to get in and like work my way into the stadium everyone's busy doing their thing and anyway so long story short i get set up with the the front of house lighting guys i get all plugged in we're doing sound check we i don't know maybe we had maybe an hour to sound check mm-hmm. ashley is up there she kills it like always just like total professional gets on and off and i'm setting up all the visuals and they have like the the turntable screen that's on the stage they've got these hanging led balls that also create like a screen oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. i kind of remember that they have a riser uh up in the up in the air like led screen mm-hmm. and then two like imag screens on the side <coughs> excuse me and it looks awesome i like i mapped everything i took what she had in her content and i put it everywhere like and it was just like this 3d depth stage and I'm cool with all the lighting guys. I, I know them. And I'm and I'm plugged into their main, like, media server. So I didn't get to plug straight into the walls and control it myself. Mm. I had to go through, like, this slave system that then drove the walls. And so my my tour manager comes over. He signs off on it. Looks looks good. We're good to go. My system's ready to go. I save my file. I'm, I'm ready. Go for show. Let's do this thing. And so the night ramps up. Uh, somebody opened up for us. I forget who it was. And... As the artist is just finishing up, the first artist before us, all of a sudden <clears throat> I lose my auxiliary screens. The power to like the master media rack goes down. Like they lost power. And I'm just like freaking out. Like and the guys are kinda a little like not so um Worried urgent about, about it. it. Yeah, they're just kinda like, oh no, like, oh, oh let's get on the radio. And, and like I have my guys in my radio telling me like, yo, we're go for show, we'll go for show. Like the ta- the turntable's starting to spin. <laughs> and, you know, oh if you've ever like put in multiple outputs from a computer, you see like all of a sudden all those screens are, you, you have no more connectivity to them. It just all drops down to your single desktop. So all this time that I had spent mapping all these <laughs> fixtures was just erased. Gone. Yeah. <laughs> and on, I'm sitting there on my radio calling to my, my team like, yo, um, power's down power's down but i don't know what happened i 
I don't know if they couldn't hear me, but like nobody was getting back to me. So I felt oh, like I was shit. like flying in the dark and I'm yelling at these guys. I'm like, you got to get your rig back on, turn that stuff back on. And then they're like, not, they were having a hard time with their system. And so I'm like, just plug me in directly, yeah. put me straight to the walls and I'll do it. And so they plug my, uh, my output from my machine into, into whatever like basic system was feeding the walls. And I'm sitting there while she's spinning around ready to launch graphics and i'm trying to put the shapes back oh. where they're supposed to be but like in a in a real incognito way so nobody on the in the crowd sees what's happening sure and then i think i get it right and she's like coming into her i think i missed the whole first song it just it was like just lighting yeah. like no no animation so that was fine and then we we um come for uh it comes down to the second song and she launches into it and i launch my animations and they're up but like my fucking taskbar is at the top of the screens, you know, like Mac OS taskbar. And I got my tour manager like, Rob, what the fuck? Like abort, abort, abort. You got to get this shit down. What are you doing? What are you doing? And I'm like, dog, I'm trying. I'm like sweating. Like I'm freaking, I'm dead. I'm like inside. I'm just trying to hold it together. And it was just a, you know, long story short, it was a tough moment. And like, I goes back to like, nobody cares. You either do it or you don't. It, nobody cared that the the power distro went down. Nobody cared that you know um, it, I, I had to remap everything on the fly. It was like it, it just looked it looked jank for a minute, and then like luckily, um, I just pulled it all down. And then I, I think like towards the end of the set, I was able to get some things working well. But I was so sad. Like you know, you spend all morning sound checking, and you're like you have it perfect, and then some some dipshit like hits the like uh, I don't know maybe a, f a fuse blew or something like who knows oh my God. <laughs> and then I just got chewed out that night I I thought I was going home that's another thing about these tours man is like if you fuck up like you go home they're gonna send you home they'll yeah. put you on a flight the next day yeah. and luckily these guys like had mercy on me they were like just they were like don't ever let that happen again they like because like what if her fan like got took a photo of her and then that shit was Blasted in the background shit yeah out, so yeah. like they have to be super sensitive about that stuff so i get it yeah but man sometimes you just can't control that i know we always make fun of dead mouse because he seems to have <laughs> these epic power failures too and i think it's because like they have such elaborate systems it's insane that like like it's so easy for like one thing to mess up and just throw the whole show i i I talk about it all the time, like whenever, like uh, whatever, like there's a glitch in an export or whatever the fuck, and it's like people get all like huffy puffy, and it's like, dude, it's zeros and ones, yeah, it's zeros and ones just combined together to make all this shit happen. Like yeah. it's some, it's like you can't expect it to always work. Like yeah. there's workarounds for things like that. Yeah, and yeah, like talking about like Dead Mouse's shows, like yeah, like that cube thing he has, yeah. and then like the whole thing is synced to the, his helmet. Yeah, then like uh. Like I know, bass nectar shit is like kind of ridiculous. Pretty lights, all yeah. as another one. I I always thought had like a, a pretty amazing, uh, pretty amazing like show. Yeah, they yeah, the production value on some of the stuff is just wild. The 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 layers of complexity. Yeah, and like you know, but the audience doesn't care, right? Yeah, the sound goes stuff. down, and yeah. everyone's like, oh man, bummer. Yeah, <laughs> you just ruined my whole vibe. <laughs> yeah. What do we do with ourselves? Am I supposed to dance still? <laughs> Little do they know there's like five guys panicking, freaking out backstage. What like, I fuck. What I loved about Dead Mouse, oh, he was playing as his like um, techno test like pilot. test pilot. Yeah. So he was in Detroit, and it they they could um they were delaying his show because of rain was coming in, and like they were like mm. they were thinking like some lightning was about to pop off. So sure. he's up on stage just telling jokes into the mic, and I thought it was hilarious. He's like <laughs> got this salty attitude, and he was just like just telling ridiculous jokes like about Richie Houghton and just like clowning on people. And I thought it was a good filler for like, everyone's like super excited. They're waiting. And then they let him go on. I don't know why, like it was still downpouring and shit. And like, he just went on it. it he struck up that stage. It was awesome. Like full lights came in. The Fuck sound yeah. was amazing. Like, and then uh, I think something happened with the power distro in the back. Like it got wet or something <laughs> and like popped a fuse. And then like his, his shit just went down, you know? And it's like, what are you going to do? Yeah, shit happens, man. Yeah, it's like. But yeah, that, 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 that story about the shit going down and Halsey and them being like, <laughs> just like, dude. Don't let that happen again. Even though it wasn't oh, your yeah. fault, but it's oh, like nobody cares. But nobody cares. Yeah, yeah. like there, there, these, there's these, no these, excuses. Yeah, these people came. They pay for their show, yep. and like you know, this is what we have <clears> to do. So like, you always gotta have backups. You got, but like something like that, you would never think. Like, well, yeah, the the problem is because it was a fly date show. We didn't have like your own redundancies. Yeah, we didn't have backups. A bunch and, of yeah, yeah, time to plan. And and you know, there's looking back in retrospect, maybe you do something differently. 
but you just i trusted that guy's system i was plugging yeah. into it i it was kind of like i was at, at his whim but i think maybe a, like a true veteran might have had to trace the system back and like <laughs> yeah it, some kind of redundancy but yeah you know on bigger shows you know what was interesting about that show is um it went from being like house of blues like 2300 cap rooms and she was just growing in success mm -hmm. and she ended up opening up for uh, the weekend. So we went on this big stadium run. So I went from playing like House of Blues style shows with like a small stage to like stadiums Stadium. around the U.S. and, and, and Canada. <coughs> and that was crazy. Plugging into those huge screens in the, in the arenas and trying to run those every night. It was wild. But yeah, it's just like you can't fail. <laughs> yeah. No excuses, buddy. <laughs> What up, Facebook? We still using that? What, what's going on with Zach? Oh, wow. <laughs> we got catering here. <laughs> croutons. You eat those straight? <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> this guy over here munching on croutons. Straight croutons. Is this part of Sober October? <laughs> yeah, just like hella. Mo oh, yeah. So uh, I'm, I am smoking weed. That's like the only thing that I'm doing, weed and uh, energy that's drinks. Sober. That's not sober. That's like this ain't I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, like every time anybody sees me, like you're not sober, I'm like I don't have a problem with smoking weed. Yeah. <laughs> like I have a problem with drinking, <laughs> staying up late, yeah, treating my body <laughs> exactly. poorly as a thirty, thirty year old. Um, so when you moved away from LA, we were all really really bummed. Oh man! But you're in the Bay now, mm -hmm. and um, I haven't talked to you in a while. But so you, last I heard, you were working with like a video game company, right? Yeah. So a lot of this animation stuff and just motion graphics in general lends itself. I'm good on that now. Uh, lends itself to uh, to video games. Actually, it's kind of funny. I mean, like uh, we're trying to market these games to be exciting, so you need like awesome animation. And so <clears throat> when I first got up to the Bay just like on a whim again like it was kind of like leaving chicago you're like just digging into a whole new industry yeah because that was r right after you got done with the halsey gig right yeah you so yeah like out. i you know like the that tour had come to an end and uh everyone got you know like flew back i had st I, I didn't even have an apartment i had stuff in storage so i'm like coming back to la to nothing yeah it's like you're on this high <laughs> and just floating that for so long and then you just like land touch back down and you're like all right time to pick up the pieces and and i was thinking like oh, i'll probably jump on another tour we'll uh, keep working with lee the, the lighting designer mm -hmm. and then um just things in life shifted and uh got an opportunity to go up to the bay um and i i applied and started working at um, ubisoft um, which is a big um, uh, french game studio developer and they have offices in in San Francisco. So it was uh it was sad to leave the music industry and I lay behind all the friends, but it's like interesting to get into a new career path, you yeah, know, right? Totally. And <coughs> they have all the tools at these studios that you need to make whatever you want. Sick. And they're just looking to to make exciting advertisements for the game. So when I was at Ubisoft, we got to work on uh South Park uh, Fractured But Whole. Fuck yeah. Yeah, that w that was uh <laughs> Did, you know, like Ubisoft, they get a lot of shit sometimes, but their games were just fun. Like all the titles, I think at any given time we were probably trying to market like five games and, and upcoming games. You know, there's like E3 every year and they're mm. trying to push out the, their latest game. And they have just like exciting titles and, and things in development that we get to see on the back end. And, you know, you're creating again like animations to go to social media now. So like we, at Revolt, we're going straight to broadcast. But yeah. I think... You know, with advertisements, paid marketing, you're going just straight to people's devices. So I'd I'd make ads and like see them on Instagram that night. You know, yeah. so it was cool. That's rad. Yeah. Um, what do you like better? You like LA? Or you like San Francisco better? That's a tough question. <laughs> Don't ask my girlfriend. She ah. <laughs> she has her own opinions about this. I I feel that it's feel tough. That. It, no, I get a lot of shit because like I I try to keep it real. Like I don't try to sugarcoat things. Like I'll tell you how it is. Totally. Um. And and to me, and when it boils, when when you get down to it, they both have their own personality, right? North Bay versus uh, SoCal. Totally. And I I like the grittiness of um, L.A. and like there's still a lot of space downtown L.A. that's undeveloped and untouched. Mm. I mean, yeah, you got like Skid Row and you got all these empty warehouses, but 
you know, you have like artists that can survive there and do their thing and like somewhat affordable rent. Yeah. Whereas like Bay Area is just tech city and money and it's tough. It's a, you know, everyone hears about the housing crisis in the Bay Area and, and how hard it is to, you know, you, you have to have roommates and you, you know, like. How do you how do you get by if you're working at Starbucks, right? I don't like, get it. I don't either. I go down to like um, Embarcadero or something. You're like proper San Francisco, and you're like, how do these people like survive around here? Like working these kind of like minimum wage jobs or yeah. whatnot. So it's it's a tough climate, but also you have to give the Bay Area credit for for developing all of this great technology pushing from like, culture yeah for really pushing culture from like the early days of like xerox and these like intel and atari and these early like developers and to where we are at now like you, you have to give them props and and then a lot of those artists branched out into creative ventures like creating analog um synths and like pushing the technology I I creatively so it's it has and you know you've got like dead and company th that came out of northern north bay up there um so a lot of culture but i find anymore now like right like if it if a place is only um affordable by like a certain top percentage of people y it's going to start to become like you know what's a good word for it it's going to be like everybody is the same right it's like there's no diversity because it's all like the top earners in their class totally. or in the, in their industry so i think it just pushes artists out unfortunately it, it's a, it's an evolution you know yeah i i know i i like talk to a lot of people and they have like an exit strategy like they're going to leave the bay at some point like maybe they're going to keep working at twitter for like a few more years yeah, and then they're like going to like dip out so yeah it's it's, it's a strategy huh but you know like What's cool is to compare the music scenes, like back to music. Um, I was just gonna ask that. Yeah, like so, <laughs> I, I live uh, in, interestingly on an island, like right outside of Oakland, called Alameda, mm -hmm. and just a like small town community feel. But then you go right over the bridge to Oakland, and you've got like just a ton of diversity coming out of Oakland, from hip hop to to alternative rock shows, like metal shows. You know, they like they came up on metal. Totally. And. Um, like amazing hip hop shows and then you go over to San Francisco proper and you've got all these like legendary venues to to attend and the stud and like things going on in the Castro so there's a there's a lot to be had definitely it's just getting a little bit harder i think for the promoters to 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 t occupy those spaces mm. right and like they got to now they got to pay all these fees or yeah s you know just to get the space that they used to get back in the 80s or 90s so Hmm. It, it's tough but um there's some gr some great things we uh I, I don't know if you've ever heard of mutech coming out of Mo montreal no. it's this big like arts festival that they do in montreal and mutech is like a mixture uh, and they really focus on visual and music Sick. so it's like <laughs> animation showcase with music Hell yeah. and the what they do in montreal is they like they set it up around the city so you go to different venues you buy like one pass and then you go it's like a week long into the weekend and you get to see all these different experiences and they brought that to the bay area and to san francisco and they had like a mutech san francisco run and they worked with all the local promoters that usually do the stuff in, in on the weekends and put together like they went to the california science academy and did a night they like took it over this museum like so we're in there oh shit. we're in cal science in the basement <laughs> there's like this aquarium and there's like a dj <laughs> pumping beats into the like aquarium wall and there's like projection mapping going off and then there's fish on the reverse side just swimming along what and you're fuck? like man this is great like you know how can i hate on this they, they, we've got like mutech coming in from montreal putting on a great show there's a there's a building downtown uh, called the Mint Building, mm. and it's, it used to be like an old banking building, and they have all these vaults underneath in the basement, and they just took over all these vaults and put like a different visual experience in each vault. So you would go down this long, dim, dark hallway and then turn left into like a isolated vault, and it was like just this strobe room where like the strobe was like firing <laughs> off, or the next room had projection mapping, and the next room had some kind of like connect sculpture that oh, you were shit. controlling with your body. And uh, and then they just like it, it opens up into this huge room uh, that they had just live music going on and and so there have been like just a lot of cool events that pop up around that area in Northern California, a lot of like Burning Man offshoots and yeah. it's funny you'll see all the art from Burning Man just like in Alameda there's like this around like storage city. area and yeah, I'm just like <laughs> I'm like wait did we see that on the playa? Uh, like, 
Will they keep that here? I know that. That shit is so. Yeah, that's yeah. like a like um lightning in a bottle. They're like they just left some of the art like at the farms. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like when you're driving into LIB, oh, yeah. like the farms around there, they just have like the huge like uh, with a wire wrap, but it's like a face and shit. Yeah. But yeah, seeing all that kind of um like when I think of San Francisco, I just think of jazz. Oh yeah. Like the fucking that's like I don't know. I just see San Francisco and I just jazz. I just, see, <laughs> see, I just, like, I, I, I think of like Chicago as like a big jazz mm, hub too, totally. like Buddy Absolutely. Guy and like yeah. I, yeah. I wish I knew more about jazz. I, I'm like out of those circles. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, 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 don't, I don't I don't know any of the artists or anything like yeah. that. I just like I I just I usually just put this shit on like Apple Music on like mm-hmm. just the jazz stations and just like oh, just man. consume. You know what I wish though is like we had those like old um, jazz joints like where you just go and it was like a show and you'd sit down and like someone would bring you drinks like like catered service. Everyone's sitting down at their own little table like kind of like yep. a comedy club almost. Yeah, and then. You're just kicking it, smoking, whatever, and then there's just like amazing musicians up on stage just ripping, ripping. just <laughs> ripping all night. Yeah. And I, I would love that, like like low lit, like no nobody necessarily has to dance. You're just there to relax. Yep. There's not a lot. I don't I don't find a lot of that. You know. So if and I I hope it's still open. But the reason why I associate jazz with San Francisco is that was the first jazz show I went to. I was young. I was with with my 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 family. And uh, my dad's friend works works at a place called Yoshi's. Okay, I forget. I think it's in Oakland. Gotcha. I, I believe it's in Oakland. Yeah. But yeah, it was ex- it literally exactly what you just said. Yeah. Little little booths and shit. Yeah. Food, drinks, and just yeah. Yeah, I you could you could have like a proper date. Like yeah. you you could probably talk even totally. You know? Absolutely, it's just that a nice that environment. Yeah. Yeah. And like the lighting looked like it was from like a like a movie just like like overhead dramatic lighting yeah <laughs> like look yeah like a real full like, piece band up on stage yeah, singers dude. everyone's dressed up just like just legit horn section and like i think like the horn guys were swapping instruments too like the whole time i remember sure. like the drummer was just murdering but then yeah like the i remember seeing like the sax player <laughs> like gives up the trumpet guy and just <laughs> just like dude, this is they're so just cool. riffing off each other <laughs> yeah dude that shit is like yeah i love that shit yeah so i mean in comparison, coming back to Southern California, there's just like such a good history um, from the 90s, totally. maybe rave day, days. Uh, and, yeah. and like what I love about Southern California is like Latino culture and totally. like they locked it down in the 90s here. Like and I could tell and, and even now going to shows, just great representation from like Hispanic community and, and, and then other diversity as well. But totally. they hold the scene down, man. And. I think there was even I heard about this like anti rave act like shit got so out of control back in the nineties. They oh, put yeah, forward yeah. legislature yep. to like shut that stuff down um, yep. because it was getting so wild and I'm just like more power to you, man. Like that, that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, th- I think that was like uh, it was after like the EDC where the girl died. Yeah, and it was like yeah, there was like a woman like well, I think they were. I don't know if it was an anti-rave policy, but I know mm-hmm. they were like no more shit at the Coliseum at all. Yeah. Like, and then and then it became like. No more like I think yeah, I think it was like big venues like you, mm-hmm. then that's why it went back to the desert and shit like that. Yeah. But there, there was a there was a whole well, point like don't make this illegal. They're gonna do it anyway. They sure. just gonna, it's it's not gonna be like legal. Yeah. So. No, I mean even I think there was even that happening in the nineties too. Like oh yeah, uh, yeah for sure. And it was all going underground because they couldn't have a sanctioned event. Yeah. You couldn't go past, especially certain in LA, time, you can't go past like two p.m. drinking yep. and. Mm-hmm. So it's tough, but I mean, then like just culture just like boils up and then people do it <laughs> wherever they can. You know, it's this like lawlessness. So I, I love that about Southern California. Punk rock shit. And L.A. Yeah. People think it's all just like Hollywood and glitz and glamour. But there's like a Legit there's an here. there's an underbelly totally. that you have to 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 really like you have to kick around for a while before you you find it. Absolutely. I remember like certain places like you would get an address. uh from a guy in a U-Haul truck just sitting in an empty lot like you you would get directed to him you tell him a password and then he tells you the real address and then you get there and you have to like pull a book on a bookshelf and the bookshelf removes the way and then like there's just opens up to the matrix and you're like what did I just do <laughs> yeah this? dude some like yeah rave ninja type shit yeah. I think that was the first incognito show you're like mm-hmm. yo there's incognito shit at the warehouse like cool and yeah I think, we had, I think our, that one was easy though that was just like one person one person and then there was like the address yeah that was a while ago too. It was like four years ago, some shit like yeah. that. I mean, those inc- incognito, from what I take, those guys have been around since yeah. the, the, the early days, Not and they do it right. They have just great spaces. They find good stuff, and they bring in a great sound system. Yeah, and good speakers always. Yeah, killing it. How are we doing on time? I'm talking your ear off. No, nah, we're good. I was just gonna, I was just gonna wrap this up, man. Yeah. Um, 
fuck yeah, dude. This is the first time that we've done it where it's like, like just walk in and do it. Yeah. Because every time we've we've done it before, we've like we're kicking it for like a half an hour, having drinks, we're smoking a cigarette, and then yeah. by the time we start doing the podcast, it's like we kind of already talked about, it. and so it feels Everything. weird, like you're regurgitating it and shit. Yeah. So yeah, this was like a definitely a redo this like this again. It makes sense. Yeah. Because it's like you just, it's like you're just talking. It's not like a. What are we going to talk? You know what I mean? It's <laughs> sure, not like a sure. setup thing. It's like, yeah, we're just going to fucking chill. Well, man, I had to catch up with you, and I'm glad, you know, we could put it out there. Hopefully some people uh, tuned in and got some some fun stories. Yeah, man. And, uh, I mean, the, the one of the biggest reasons why I want to talk to you, well, I mean, obviously you're the homie, but, like, because we've been having just DJs. Yeah. And I was like, we got to be, like, let's talk to like, everybody involved, like, with the industry. Because it gets boring as fuck after all. You're like, oh, this track, this track. Yeah. This, you know what I mean? Like, it gets pretty monotonous. So, like, we're trying to, like... We're, we're, yeah we're trying to hit like everybody who's like involved with the culture so this is if, if anybody's watching this if you do this kind of shit like you're involved in music at any it doesn't have to be dance music any type of music at all just like you know we're down to like to chat about it and just to kind of like you know put it out there and yeah like hopefully people learn a little bit i mean i've always appreciated visual so yeah. i mean it takes a it takes a village you know to put these things on yeah. there it, it's really true artistry it's, it's awesome to see that like multidisciplinary artists come together and create one thing right like so uh, one event so yeah I, I love talking to other people too in the space even if you're like you're just the running the cables to the speakers like we need you man totally we need you <laughs> and uh last thing i gotta thank you again yeah. for the fucking the 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 mix plate shaka graphics yeah too. those animations are fun and uh it's I actually gonna logo. be it's it's uh the, so the i think i sent you a video it was like at avalon yeah. and i was like holy shit rob your fucking visuals are <laughs> it was cool <laughs> to see that but then like but so it's also gonna be uh at exchange tonight oh wow marvin just is he he got a spot playing after a track for the um it's an insomniac event beyond wonderland some shit like that yeah yeah one of the insomniac things it's like a pre-party before that shit and so he just he like yesterday he called he's like dude i'm opening i'm, I'm closing after age no <laughs> way it's so, like, so is he oh, gonna throw shit. up the graphics tonight yeah no, he's, sick. yeah he's like i i, I love that i just like, sent them so like yeah it's fun to just like release those things into the wild you know like you know you know where it's gonna pop up i think that's what any like visual artist wants to see is just like pass my work along yeah you know, i want to see it up on the screens totally yeah I man it's fun. I, I can't thank you enough for that shit and yeah. uh, last 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 thing you just went to the um control z party oh god yeah that, like that was fun what the fuck man that's so, cool that they're doing that kind of thing i was telling people about it and i was just like yo it's like not about the DJs, it's about the about the visuals guys yeah they're like Huh. <laughs> yeah, so, like, yeah. you know, like a visual artist, I would say, like, goes hand in hand with music. We're oftentimes Absolutely. designing for music. And yeah. it, and it, uh, there's this guy, uh, Beeple, in the scene. He's really known because he does a graphic a day. And he's been doing it for something like six years straight without missing a day. Just totally. And, and every piece, it's like it's like a master's class in, in like, learning graphic design. Because he started with just, like, Photoshop. And now he's doing 3D. But anyway, so he's, like, a big... Um, Big guy in the motion graphics community decides he's from like Wisconsin, just killing it over in like the Midwest. Like doesn't even matter. He's not even in L.A., but he's like, yeah. I'm throwing a party in L.A. with Production Club. These guys are like they work on all the biggest, greatest stage design. So I respect them a lot. So I'm like, count me in. I'm coming. And oh, I yeah. and I uh, sent them just some of the visuals I worked on. I know a lot of artists submitted theirs. And funny enough, I mean, my, the stuff I make, it's like uh, it's it's very short scenes and like when we got there it was so funny the all this stuff that they're showing up on their screens is like polished it was like a volcano erupting and then lava flowing out and then turning into like flowers and then the flower uh, petals flew off into like a butterfly just amazing amazing <laughs> graphics and i sent them like my i, I like animated goku like <laughs> slamming a hammer to like a four count beat for like techno oh, that's and i got like goku up and so i we, caroline my girlfriend was like laughing at me she's like i don't even know they're not they might not even play any of your shit like look at all this look at this i'm like babe that's an apple commercial like there was 12 people that worked on that but no so funny <laughs> enough we go outside we're like standing out with our friends and all of a sudden i see uh like goku come up and he's like slamming the hammer up on the big like uh projection wall <laughs> and then it's like ron cornell <laughs> they credited so they they boofed my name they boofed my name up <laughs> They Fucking totally screwed that. Ron so Cornell. And everyone's <laughs> like, yo, Ron Cornell has the best <laughs> ring to it. You shall now be forever known as Ron Cornell. <laughs> <laughs> like the most confusing marketing ever. Yeah. Like your your visuals all, alias is Ron Cornell, but your name is Rob Cornell. We're like, who is this guy? <laughs> Rob or Ron? I'm both. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> what the fuck? No, but 
It was great. It was <laughs> a great the, night. The, they they had uh you know great like they brought in this like function one sound system. Sick. They had an indoor outdoor. They had a big LED wall going off, and I could just tell all the people there were like probably in the industry to some degree. And it was it's, I mean it's nice to just get those people in the same room. They probably put in a lot of hours on these big commercial spots, and just to like let them kick back and be celebrated for their work. And everybody loved it. Like. They had this big LED wall in in the interior, and people were just dancing in front of it. And like one guy just started um, leading the dance, like everyone started mimicking oh, him. Hell yeah! And so they just had this great flow going inside. <laughs> so it was it was fun to just Fuck get yeah. all those people in the same room and uh, rub shoulders. But yeah, I hope in the future there's more events like that Me where too. it's like mixed discipline. You have animation and uh, you know audio whatever live painting yeah it, have you i think it's great like yeah and it, it it can i think you can push that into a new space and just have like totally new experiences like you were talking about oh man i can't like keep partying like this but it, maybe it doesn't have to be like this this frat rager mm -hmm. maybe it can be like all these artists coming together and just putting on a really like amazing show. yeah just an art show you yeah, know not a party yeah but it can still feel like you can still party. have fun yeah but it's not do like a you do you yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah oh man you're totally right yeah like uh like if <laughs> like if you could turn like the rave into like a soiree yeah. <laughs> like like uh, you know what i mean like it's not like a fucking rave shit right here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this shit's this shit's a soiree <laughs> yo yeah. i'm coining that <laughs> nah, my fucking, we don't throw events we throw so soirees <laughs> no. this is the real stuff soirees no nah, that's stupid soirees okay. dope all right man that's fucking fuck yeah dude it was Cheers. good kicking it with dude, you yeah it was good kicking it with you let me get one of Cheers. these fuck yeah my man mixed bait podcast peace thanks for having me